Testing, testing. Mm -hmm. One, two. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's been a growing experience overall. That's yeah, all I can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. Trial by fire. I think it's, the, it's probably the best way to really grow and learn. I think when I was going to school for business, it was like, what are you guys talking about? Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, okay, kind of makes sense, but it's still way different. Like, I feel like they teach you, this is the way you do business, but it's like, this is the way <laughs> business goes. <laughs> That's the big difference. Hopefully the audio is good because uh, every this software. <laughs>
for honoring, you know, and it was just something I just wanted to be a little different, you know, okay. just kind of honor the city. That's good. That's yeah. awesome. And that's a good way to like come up with the with the name and have a nice history behind mm-hmm. it. You know, well, we're on Madeley Street, three sixteen Madeley, so it was our address, so okay. it kind of made kinda sense. Know. You know, yeah, would have been better if it was uh, easier to pronounce, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny when I send liners to the artists to have them make me uh, video liners for promotion of concerts and stuff. I always put the name of the table at Madeley, and after Madeley, I put in parentheses M A I D dash L E E, and I still have them say it wrong. How do they say it? Madeley, Madeline, Madeline you know, made you know all kinds <laughs> of stuff except for Madeley. Right. Wow, wow. So I was I was looking there when you started there. There was a house there, mm-hmm. right? And I remember that house just from driving down there for years. Um, and then so you bought the house. And then I, I saw the post on the, you kept some stuff from mm-hmm. the house. Yep. And go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we purchased the land in 2018 and I've lived here my whole life, but just south behind Tamina and all that down Sleepy Hollow Road. And I never really turned on that Madeley Street in my life because it was all overgrown. It just didn't look right. good. It's and a useless street before you. Like, why, yeah. why, would, why would anybody go? Well, the only people that short, did shortcut. was, yeah, there's yeah, people that, that shortcut, shortcut through yeah. to miss the light at Fraser in 105. Right. And then Conroe PD used to be back there. Uh-huh. Yeah, but yeah. now it's this, the utility and permit yes, building. Yes, yes. Um, and so I had a dream one day that there was a, a waterway that really started right here by your office, by Taco Bell and the post office, and it ran all the way through the flag park, comes around, down, and ended right there by the, uh, the old police station uh, driveway, in, the back entrance. Mm-hmm. And then I turned on that street, and that property was for sale, and I was like, whoa. whoa. So I called my friend, and I asked him to look into it, and it was very reasonable. And I was like, man, uh, we'll make an offer. Right. And they and they came back and said they said yes and I was like, <clears throat> oh. <laughs> yes. I better tell Miss Jackson that we're going to buy some property <laughs> where I get in trouble. Right. And that's really how all that started. And there was uh, a lot of uh, homes on there. There was the original house from the '40s, mm-hmm. which I I did salvage the original shiplap that was two layers underneath the siding, okay. and it was from the '40s. And you can see that in the building today underneath the bar. Kind of used it as a wainscot. Okay in some areas inside. Uh, there was a mobile home in the back where the stage is. It was about probably a 40 foot, 45 foot mobile home. Uh, in between the two trees against the back fence by Sonic was an 800 square foot little house. Right. And then uh, like a little camper trailer there. I mean, it was a mess. Right. It was it was disgusting. The was first time I abandoned? walked through. Was it abandoned for a long time? Uh, what was uh, a lot of vagrants were staying in there and I, whoever was living there before, they were farming old people or something because there was multiple hospital beds inside the house. Uh, there was uh, the closet and the kitchen had um, catheters and diapers and medical stuff inside there. It was almost like they were just trying to keep people alive for their social security. How long, how long was that? I have no idea. I, I, when I walked through the first time, you know, I walked in packing with my flashlight and, and it was knee deep of trash, debris, oxygen tanks. Uh, it was it was disgusting. Wow. It was it, it was not good. A lot of my friends from the uh, PD and the fire department said they had been to that property multiple times for overdoses, uh, violent, all kinds of problems. So it's really cool to see God take something so bad and right. turns into right. something so beautiful right. now that families come in and enjoy, enjoy. And, and it's really awesome. That's, yeah. that's real good. Well, in that area, even across the street off um, off of uh, one hundred and seventy five. There used to be that hotel and mm-hmm. all that back then. So I think maybe once all that was taken down, I mean, they just probably went somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, just, yeah cause I, I, I do remember when I first got here, I've been here 17 years now. Uh, but yeah, that whole area was kind of a little sketchy. Yeah. You, you didn't want to go to that 99 cent store by yourself mm-hmm. late at night. But yeah, it's yeah, come down, a long way. Downtown has really transformed yes. in the last what would we say five years yeah Yeah. it's been really slowly ticking and now when you know since we're up and running with a brand new building we were really the first building beside the bank building the wood forest rebuild uh to be constructed i think since 99 i think the chamber building was the last building built downtown until us yeah now they have you guys the the bank and now there's uh moco food hall which they renovated Mm -hmm. and the one beside them that's Coming up, yeah, they just and then across from them, yeah, yeah, that's a, old furniture. Store. And that's just what the what the idea, I guess, that they're just trying to reamp downtown and just kind of keep it like. 
get it back into being somewhere to be? I guess that's the... Well, across the state, you know, they have these cultural arts districts that kind of are in historic downtown areas, Mm -hmm. uh, main streets and stuff like that. And I think that's kind of the goal is to really turn it into a tourism area Mm -hmm. because we get a lot of people from uh, Margaritaville. Right. When the Hyatt Convention Center is done down there in Grand Central, there'll be a bus that runs back and forth that brings people to downtown. Uh, so it is just almost, you know, I think it's more of a, uh, you know, like I said, we want to preserve the downtown and that's the best way to do it is to make it uh, prosperous and make people, right. you know, have businesses that people want to have and, yeah, and, and come and, and support and be there. And it's a lot of bars, it's a lot of restaurants stuff, but it also needs to be good retail. Um, hopefully not chain store retail, hopefully right. private people, because I think that's what makes it unique and special. Correct. Right. And I think that's that's just, it still keeps it local mm-hmm. when it's, it's just that way. Because a lot of times, even if it's a box company, it might be a local owner, but it's still not, it's still... It's still got the massive marketing. Correct. It comes behind yeah. it. Yeah. But that's good. And with that area, so there was a time I was looking into Montgomery, um, and they had a lot of restrictions with what was being built around that area. Did you have a lot of restrictions because it was maybe in the still historic? Uh, no, the only objections I have, but we overcame them, was initially a food park in Conroe was illegal. Right. There, okay. there was no ordinance that supported that. So we uh, helped draft that ordinance, basically. They used us as a template of what it means to be called a food truck park in the city of Conroe. Okay. You must have electricity for the trucks. You must have dumping facilities for the trucks. You must have water for the trucks. You must have a restroom on site for them to go to. Okay. Uh, before, what was it, like four hours max? That no, I- it was two. Oh, it was two. And then when they changed it and, ch- and added the park stuff in there, they made it six. Okay. Yeah, so so the, the trucks benefit as well, even if they're not in a, in a park? Uh, from the... Uh, from their own, like... From the ordinance? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, th- I think it would be hard to, you know, just work six hours. Of course, most of them work past six hours because right. there's no compliance. They make rules and don't really follow through with a lot of them. Right, right. But yeah, I think that was the biggest thing because there's a few people that I knew had food trucks and that was the thing. They'd be like, we're here for two hours and then we're... Or, but who can make a living in two hours? I no. mean, unless you're a rock star. No. And then, uh, <laughs> well, we had Danny here. Remember Danny? Um, yeah. He was a Mexican. Um, and, and we also had, um, by the way, I have 1488. Oh, Saul. Saul. Yeah, Saul. So, and that was the main thing where they would get messages like, hey, we're here. Oh, we're not there today because of this time of this time. We'll, we'll be there. So it was a lot of inconsistency. And even though they had a good following, it was still just mm-hmm. that, that killed it. But I, I remember probably a year ago, two years ago, that, that started changing. Was just, uh, what's the name? Joey. Taste of Asia. Oh, uh, started, oh Son, yeah. Sean, yeah, Son started uh, moving all that stuff. But that's good, that's good. Well, it was all around the same time we were doing Correct. that so because all we were all coming in to do movement. that. So it's really, a, you know, uh, a benefit for them trucks to be there. Uh, I, that's what I want is consistency, you know, but the hard part with the trucks, they have their own mentality. They want to come and go. They still want to have that same mindset. Mm-hmm. But in my opinion, that's not how you build a good, consistent business. You've got to be open all the time like the mall. Correct. Right. You go to Spencer's and the mall's empty, guess what? Someone's in there ready to serve you. Yep. And that's the way it has to be, right. and it will be at the table at Maidley. Yeah, and that's the good. benefit of having a truck is not the mobility, it's the low overhead, right? Like the low overhead. That yeah, you- I would guess. You know, it's not really a lot. I mean, I, it's a lot. Now, you still pay rent, but... But right. it's not as much as a full blown building. I mean, like we talked earlier about the rent here. Well, yeah, look, the yeah. Rent the yeah, my rent's almost half of this, right? You mm-hmm. know, for them, and that includes the water and the internet. You know, they still have to pay for their electricity, right. but you you got to pay for something anywhere, no matter where you're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and that's also a win win for them as it, as it is for you because customers know if we go here, we go to the t- there's gonna be food, mm-hmm. there's gonna be something to do. And, and they should be open. So what happens when you show up and they're closed and we're open? That hurts you. Well, it hurts them, too, because it's an unpleasant customer experience. Correct. How many times are you going to walk back to find out that you're, you know, the food you want is not there? So is there any restrictions that you have now? Like, hey, well, I do, but they just ignore it. And, you know, so then it puts me in a bad position. What am I going to do? Crush someone financially that's already struggling or, you know find someone to, that will replace them and that's really what we have to do is put somebody in there I just have the fix by PR he's in there now right PR yeah, yeah I had them yesterday it was he's good. fantastic yeah. he's PR's got great really food he works every day yeah. he's happy to be there he realizes how difficult it is on the street because 
he came from the street. Yes. He, I wanted to have him a long time ago, but he wasn't legal because he didn't have a truck. Correct. And, Correct. and the uh, unless you're doing a special event in the county for the health department, you're technically pop ups are illegal. Correct. Correct. Yeah. But so he I'm built his following, and you know now he loves it because he doesn't have to go anywhere. And really, my rent and what I charge him is only about sixty bucks a day on average. Uh, and you can't get up and roll for 60 bucks a day. You have to dump, and that costs like 25, 30 bucks. You gotta pay gas, you gotta get up and move. His prices are reasonable. Yesterday, you had a lot of food for not. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's re- re- I know him personally, but uh, yeah, he's, I remember when he started, and he would be at um, Molly's and stuff like that. And, yeah. and I actually spoke with him, I think, like two weeks before he said he was going there. He was excited. I saw him by the tavern. I think it's called. Mm-hmm. Right yeah, Marshalls. Yeah, Marshalls. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh, I didn't know you were here." He's like, "No, but pretty soon, I want to jinx it. But we're gonna go here." I was like, "Oh mm-hmm. man, congrats!" So, so yeah. He's got a nice uh, fan base too. People yeah. come support him a lot, yeah, he's, and, and that's really what it takes to be successful. I mean, a lot of people park. They parked at my place, and they think it's gonna be gangbusters, right? There's people piling out right. of the fence, and it's that's not how it works. We all have to do our marketing. Right. We all have to have our customer base, mm-hmm. and together we share in the greatness that is there. If you park there thinking that you're going to uh, make a lot of money, like, you're not. you got to work. Yeah. So I think a lot of people still have that mentality where it's like, okay, now I, I have this. So now I'm, I'm set. Now I can do my schedule how I want. Like you said, mm-hmm. I'm going to have all the money. And now you, you got to work more. Actually. Mm-hmm. It's work really more. hard. I mean, that's not easy work. Right. People think it is, but those guys bust their butt. And, and you know, it's a good 10-hour day. And you're in a little, what, 10 by 10? Yeah. Like and, average, and you're just... It meant, ooh, in July and August, when it's hotter than Helsinki... Man, you don't want to be inside that trailer cooking. No, definitely. And it's really, really hot, you know. Correct. Correct. So before the table, what, what were you, what got you there? What, what other uh, well, you my background you? is in music distribution. My whole adult, adult life, I've been uh, distributing music content. I've always been a musician. I've always been interested in art and, you know, performance and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, and so uh, about 20, for about 25 years now, I've, I basically distribute content for artists, a lot of Texas music and country artists, American songwriters, and I still have that job today. It's my day job, and the uh, table is my night job. It's your fun. Yeah, season. my moonlight. Yeah. It, uh, so uh, it, it, it kind of works hand in hand with the entertainment and the live music that I have a lot, because all the live music that we have or artists that I've known and have worked with for multiple years. And so I call them up instead of using a booking agent to get them to come play at the table. Right, right. Let's get that, take off that third, per, that middle person out mm-hmm. of the way. And uh, is this something that you like got into and you're like, this is what I'm sticking to? Or did you have different ventures and you're like, music is my thing? Well, music has always been my thing. So whatever we did, I wanted it to be a part of it. And I wanted to elevate the musical experience in Conroe. There are there, there are a lot of music places to play in downtown. Uh, a lot of them are cover bands and things like that. I'm trying to focus on original music, people that write and create their own art, okay. not necessarily covering others. Now, do they do cover songs? Sure. But their primary is, is uh, original composition. And that's what I'm interested in. I want to see what they have. I want to see what kind of songs they have. I want to help break the next person. Well, I want to build a marketplace for some of these people that are regional, that are trying to do it. That's why uh, we charge ticket prices on the weekends for them. That's how they make money. Uh, uh, You know, tips is kind of what you do in a tourism when they play cover songs. Ticket price is what you do when you're when you're growing, you're putting your big boy, boy pants on to play and to be a musician, to create a following, to get a real booking agency. You got to be able to sell tickets, mm-hmm. and so we're trying to help them sell tickets so they can create a market here in Conroe, and, and you know, and, and grow. That's good. Who's the um, you would call like the most uh, successful, influential artist or most famous artist that you've had? That's played the table? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, probably the John Conley. Uh, he's a country, uh, he's an Opry member. He's a legend. Uh, rose-colored glasses. He's had a backside of 30. He had a lot of hits in mm-hmm. the late 70s and the early 80s. Uh, he's played there a couple times. My grand opening was with Tracy Bird. Uh, Tracy's a well-known 90s country art. I mean, they were top of the game. Uh, when, when they played, so I was honored to be able to have them play at my place, and then that sold a lot out, of right? That those tickets sold out. I remember. Yeah, that yeah. That you helped me yeah. with the poster uh, to do to our play. mystery artist because he uh, he was playing the next night at the pavilion, okay. so he we couldn't advertise that it was him. Gotcha. So I said, well, we don't need to advertise you because people we're going to sell out anyway. It's our grand opening. People have been waiting for us for a year. 
Uh, and so he, he did it, and it was a very nice surprise for our, our first-time guest, you know, to see a, such a high-quality act. And that's really what we're trying to do as a, um, an official music venue of Conroe is just to provide high-quality entertainment. So if you come to a show at the table, you're going to see someone that's, you know, up and coming. They're going to catch them on the way up or the way down. What is what is the uh, official venue mean? Is that uh, it's a designation that the uh, visit Conroe and the city put together uh, for venues to highlight venues, and it just means that you turn in your tour dates to the city, you promote your shows, uh, and you're always having live music at least uh, two or three nights a week uh, to be an official venue. That's that's a lot of work, right? Trying to be consistently having those artists every week. Well, if you do a show every Friday and Saturday, that's 104 mm -hmm. shows a year. Wow. We've started in April, and I'm probably at 75 now. Mm -hmm. wow. So it never ends. I mean, it was like the clock calendar. Goes, Man, yeah. I got to get going for February and uh, yeah, so March. You got to start planning ahead. Well, and, you need to be 90 days out or more. Wow. Well, just to get the artists, so you know, so you can. You know, get them in, book, whatever they have Get them in, then you got to get them, you know, get everything up so and running on the website and get all the promotion and then have a time to sell some tickets. Do you have repeating artists? I have people come back. Yeah, yeah when people like that I, I, I like and I think are doing good, even though they didn't really sell well, but I think, see the potential, I'll have them back. Yeah. You have people re maybe reaching out to you now? Like, oh, all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on my website, ConroeTable.com, uh, uh, band booking. Uh, you go up there and sign up. There's a long list of people oh, wow. that I have. Uh, and, and, you know, I'll use them whenever it's appropriate. Most of the time, I'm going to use my relationships to do it. And then when I need some fill-ins, I go to my list and try to see. I, you know, I kind of qualify them to see. I almost use my day job stuff to see right. if I want to, you know, have them at my night job. Right. It's, it, you know, are they really trying to make a great original presentation or are they just a cover band? Are they a cover band, eh, they're gone. Are they full band? I kind of want acoustic and duo stuff that works better at my place more than a full loud band. Okay. Weed those out. Do they have original content? Are they on Spotify? Or, you know, I go through all these things to kind of qualify them to see. To see what level. Well, it does no good to put somebody in there that doesn't promote themselves or help. Because right. the whole point is for them to bring their customers to the table. Correct. Correct. I don't need them to play to my customers. I need them to bring to their bring. own. Yeah, yeah. Like we said earlier, it has to be a win-win you bring mm -hmm. and I bring. Yes, sir. Meet, meet halfway. What do you think about in your experience that you've been in the music industry and now you have an extension of what that passion is, right? Because that's mm -hmm. what the table is. It's an extension of your music passion and you use all that. Um, have you had uh, like any other um, extensions of what that might mean? Like maybe another business venture or maybe... Uh, man, if I try to do something else right now, I think it would kill me. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of work time. running your own place from the ground up, being the guy, booking everything, answering all the questions, fixing the POS, handling problems with the mm -hmm. vendors, the trucks, handling employee issues, ordering, you know, inventory, making sure it's right, making sure it came in, making sure your order went through. Right. Are you going to get it? Are you going to have enough? You don't want to run out. Uh, right. You know, it's, it's quite a bit... Uh, at, at this point, you know, I don't really have much desire other than to make this work, uh, is which that, we is will. Is that something that you expected whenever you first opened up all the nuances of <clears throat> managing? A no, I didn't realize it was going to be uh, so demanding of my time and my uh, the capacity of what I've learned in the last eight months since I've opened. My, I can't believe my brain's holding all that information <laughs> in, you know. Right. Half of it's oozing out of my ears, <laughs> right. you know. Uh, but it's quite, I, I love it because I, it's a challenge, you right, know, and, right. and, 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 and if it's boring or not a lot's going on, I'm really bored, you know, right, twiddling right. my fingers. I like it when the house is on fire because right. that's how, you know, I, like I work on it. Uh -huh. Well, the adrenaline flows and you figure it out. I like the, the challenge of right. fail or win. Right. There's no in between, you know, you got to make it work. Uh, and, and that's probably what I do best, but I don't know uh, as I get older and older if I really want that kind of challenge anymore in my yeah. life. We talked about it in another episode that with pressure comes, um, you have to decide either, like you said, you, you, you narrow down into your decision making, either you fail or you win. Um, and it's whenever you don't have that pressure that you have this array of um, possibilities and then that's when it's like, well... You kind of second guess yourself, but mm -hmm. that pressure, it's like either win or lose. And it's that pressure that allows us to make better decisions because it's 
one way or the other Correct. rather than 50 different decisions that yep. you have whenever there's no pressure. Like iron sharpens iron, right? There Just like go. they say in the Bible, oh, because that's kind of oh, how we yeah. learn. I think that's real good because it shows that you really love what you're doing. Oh, I do. Um, and, and, and really, you want that success. And I'm pretty sure you, you want it, obviously, financially, recent, but you want it because that's you, it's who you are, it's what your family's built, yeah. and it just drives you to be there. Well, money doesn't motivate me, you know. Okay. It's important, you've got to have good it's financial, but I don't work always. for money. I work uh, to create stuff to make things happen, because I know if I do the right thing, I'll make money. Yeah, of course, I haven't made a dime working at the table yet, but uh, I will eventually. That's part of, that's, and that's another thing people need to understand, that that's part of... Be, Opening something new and being a business owner, it's not like we've discussed many times. A lot of people are like, oh, it must be nice. Look at you. You must be racking up. You know, you just together. laugh at people because, you know, they have no, no. clue at all what the heck they're talking correct. about. At correct. all. Correct. Oh, yeah, you work for yourself. You might, you get to go wherever. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. And have everything go to, you know, to the pot. Yeah. 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 And, a lot, and we've discussed that plenty of times mm-hmm. with people. And, and we we encourage people to, to look into things like that that, that they really like but with the understanding that it's not going to be easier. It's going to be harder. So it is if, hard. If you're 95 really and paying hard. the bills and you're happy, that's that's not a bad thing. You know, I think we have this new thing of, of entrepreneurs or doing your own thing, like uh, what is like a wave of everybody doing it. But I think it's important to know if you, if you it's going to get real, real tough really, really fast. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have that, that, that skin to be able to handle it, it's, it's not gonna it's be hard. Well, it's that's one thing I've really hard. noticed uh, through all this. I understand now why so many businesses fail. People get it. They break their spirit. Most of them run out of money. That's right. usually the, what happens, right. and which is easy to break your spirit when you have no money right. and no way to do it. So planning and being ahead and making sure you're personally not in debt where you can handle being able to throw money into the business when you have an awful month. Right, like we did in November. Everybody did, you right. know. Right. Well, I, I think COVID, expecting it. I think COVID helped a lot of people understand that too. A lot of businesses that weren't ready, that didn't have that backing, that were probably just living, you know, week to week. You know, it, it crushed them, yeah. unfortunately. And I think that people should learn from that as an example, not just because. It, like I told people, it wasn't COVID that did it. It was the fact COVID just showed what the yeah. businesses were were lacking in, and probably, um, um, and that's what hurt them. Um, and for some people, COVID was good. You know, COVID helped them. It, it, it made new industries come in, new yeah. new ideas come out of. And that thing, that's what you said earlier, figuring it out. Like, I'm stuck here. Sales are going down. I need to figure something else. So either I take the product to the customer or we figure out, we go online, we ship, we do something else different to, yeah. to try to. But I think, yeah, like you said, you have to have that financial backing. And if it means having a day job and if it means you know, doing that for a while until you were able to let that go. Or if that means never letting it go and having the business be its own thing where where it produces its own income for the for the people, the employees, at least you're creating jobs, right? Right. Um and if it doesn't produce income for yourself but you still have income on on coming in some other way, um you're still creating, you're still providing jobs, mm-hmm. um, which is important too. You're still providing a positive uh, place for people. Right. I think it's, like you said, it's not about the money because you can work a nine to five and make a lot of money, but you're going to be miserable yeah. if you don't right. like it. Right. Yeah. And it's not driving you. And I think that's, that's the important part of, of understanding that part. It's, you know, a lot of times people that really know me, they're like, oh, you opened your store. It was nice. Well, you know, I still fix toilets for the first eight months when I opened my store. I was still trying. I, I was a handyman before. So I was still, like, going out there fixing toilets. Like, oh, right, you have a store. Yeah, I'm still. You got toilet problems, too, as an entrepreneur? Yeah. Yeah, yeah me yeah. too. Did you know those toilets they put in with the sensors actually have software and Bluetooth that control when it flushes and how many gallons and what it does? It's driving me nuts. The toilets won't work half the time. I say, take that crap out of there and give me what I had in elementary school. Yeah, yeah, one of those I don't care how many ones. gallons we flush. Right. I don't want it to work when right. I don't, when we walk away from the toilet. Yeah. And I even had the American Standard wrap out this week, you know, really? because it's not right. Right, right. You build a brand new building, you want stuff to work. Right, more efficient. They say it's better for you. It's no, they're programmed that way. They right. come out of the factory that way. To, to oh, well, that take way. them out of here, man. I didn't even ask for the sensors. I mean, how did that even get? in there <laughs> and that's when technology becomes uh anti-user experience rather than like they they design it for a user experience you can wave your hand in front of the sensor cover it yeah. uh 
to hit the auto button to flush right. it, and it still won't work. Right. And I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah, stuff just floated Well, around. I mean, when you're working and, you, you know, you're busy, and then somebody comes, hey, that toilet's not working. That's probably the last thing you want to worry about. Or the sink won't stop. That has been the big problem. The sink, the water just kept running and running. The sensor wouldn't stop. Wow. So I go in there, and the sink's full, about to go over the thing, and I have to reach down and turn the water off underneath. Right, right. <laughs> like, oh. so you just wasted all I'm trying time. to do is serve someone a drink, man, you know, and put on a show. Right, right. <laughs> but that's just part of it. You exactly. Know, and that's what people don't understand. Mm -hmm. You get hit with things from right field that you're just you like, gotta what? have thick skin and you gotta be real level you can't I, I tell everybody that it works for me because it's so important that they make money for me um over me you know even if we have slow days and something that's dreadful and i'm trying to do something i'll compensate them uh, if they don't make any tips because the business is dead right because i want them to make money correct more than me Right. Because that's the kind of thing I drive. And then I also, when everything gets crazy or we get busy and things are going wild, you know, they go, well, how do you stay so calm? And we'll I have a simple philosophy. I want to be a thermostat. I don't want to be a thermometer. I want to set my temperature and stay there. No matter what happens outside, I'm always 72 and calm, you know. <laughs> do I get frustrated? Yes, because I'm human. Right. But I try not to lash out and go, you know make it worse right, right. It by attacking right. people or something or you know complaining about things and just you know just kind of keep moving you know i'm gonna start to be i'm gonna set about 69 70 yeah like a little colder yeah chill but, yeah you like to be chill, huh? chill yeah and that's what i told um you know just the employees with customers i'm like you shouldn't let that get to you you know just calm down you know you're probably never ever gonna see them again there's no need for you to let a customer get yeah. to you under your skin just Hold down the situation. I'm sorry. Let's make it right. Yeah. Just, oh, you have to say. And, well, things sometimes in the customer service is sometimes the customer even gets more heated up when you calm down more. Like sure, they because they're trying to get that action. That, they yeah. want that action mm -hmm. back from you. That's cool. That's cool. So what else do you have in mind there? What's like the, 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 the bigger goal or what else are you working on? Just better and better. For the table? Best for the table. Well, you know, we're still a new business. There's so many people that don't know who we are. I mean, every week we have new people come in and look around. Wow. Oh, this is great. We love it. This is, we can't believe this is in Conrad. Right. You're the urban Lukenbach, which is a big compliment to me being a music guy. People okay. love Lukenbach, Texas, out in the hill country, okay. uh, and, and and that's gratifying. I think long term, I wanna I wanna focus more in 23 on doing more private events and special things because we have such a unique uh, facility. We have a lot of audio and technology uh, from the band's point of view, but it can also be used for presentation for corporations, for weddings or anything like that, little smaller things. Right. And I'm going to go after that market a, a little more okay. aggressively in 23 and just instead of hoping someone shows up to buy an egg roll, right. uh, I want that, you know, I want to have the place full because it's a great place. Correct. Correct. People love it and they keep coming back and they bring a lot of kids with them and it's really cool, man. Right. And it's so gratifying when people come up and say, thanks. Thanks for building this. This is so awesome. Right. You know, because it always seems to happen when I'm most down, you know. And down meaning like it's just one thing after another. Right. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, something's not working. Someone didn't show up to cook or whatever, you know. And then right. someone says, oh, this is great. I love it. And I'm like, oh. and that's the thank you for that, reminding me why I'm doing this. Right, you know? and that's the difference that money is not going to be able to give you that feeling compared to that smile from that customer. Yeah, you can't pay for that. Yeah. Correct, and correct. So it's pretty cool. I get paid by the, your smile when you walk on my property. Right. You know, and I know we're doing something right. That's good. That's and right. I think Conroe, the city of Conroe, has done a better job of moving people around, right? Like with the new bus system. But the new bus system is fantastic. I think it's a great idea. Now it's only going to work if everybody promotes that. Correct. You know, and that's going to be a problem. And it always has been with everything that we do. Is it, everybody has to be pushing the same message. Mm -hmm. about it and so I've added that in my uh, marketing about the bus because it's an incredible benefit for me if you're at 202 Main you want to come to my place all you have to do is get on the bus and you'll be right. there in about six minutes you're right. a little tipsy or and, yeah or just you know so what I'm going to do when I have been doing already in the last three weeks I have posters up in my place promoting it. I talk to people about it. I say, hey, did you know it doesn't matter where you park in downtown, you can come to the table. Or you can park at the table, and when our show's over at 9, you can go see another one. Just get on the bus, and you can come back. And you know, as long as you're back by 1230, you can get a ride back to your car. Yeah. Right, right. That's people, a great, great. And it's all about the tourism thing, right? That's what it, it you know just if that's free or if it's paid? It's free. Even yeah. Better. People pay for those services, like party buses, to, mm -hmm. to go from one 
bar to another. Well, the uh, the city had extra buses because of some grants and stuff they got from the federal government. So they go, hey, let's do this for this. You know, mm-hmm. more than it's already everything's already in their budget anyway, so it's right. not like costing them any extra to do it. Right. Right. Uh, but it's only going to work if people promote it. You know, so hopefully at some point we'll have video on there, mm-hmm. you know, describing the buildings and talking about yeah, downtown. You know, awesome. almost like when you get in a cab in Vegas or something, right. you know, and they you can't talking. help but see all the video constantly. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it should have that kind of stuff and make it fun, you know, yeah, not just a bus. Right. Make it more inviting for mm-hmm. people to, to want to use it. Okay. That, that's no, most people don't know what it is. They just look at it and go, oh, what's yeah. that? What is that? It's not the you metro. But then they complain about parking. Yeah. Or they there's complain. no parking. Yeah, or, yeah. I mean, that's me. That's like, there's no parking. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. They say, where do you park when we come to the table? I said, where do you park when you go to Red Brick? On the road, you just find a spot. Find a spot. And we got some parking around us. We don't have a ton, but... Are you guys able to use that um, laundry mat across the street? Uh, yeah, they've been the Peterite uh, investment firm owns that, and they've been very nice and generous and le- not minding when we have overflow. Um, same with the chiropractor next door to me. Okay, yeah. As long as he's closed, he doesn't care if people park there. Um, he closes on Fridays at noon, so when we're busiest, he's gone, and so that really helps. And there's parking on Madeley Street. A lot of people don't realize you can park on Madeley Street because it's not really marked. Right. Uh, but it is legal. And so, you know, mm-hmm. it's yeah. not that big a deal. And, and then plus it makes you look busier than you are like half time. Correct. Right? correct. There's a lot See, of cars. Sometimes you know? we'll pass by them like, we must have missed something. Look at all these Whoa, cars. Whoa, we could come. It's so busy all the yeah. time. <laughs> that's good. That's good. But with that coming in, do you guys, because that's still considered... It's, Conroe, historic Conroe, that, that part right there? Uh, well, it, it, there's so many different downtown uh, designation lines for the city, it's weird. No, it's, yeah, they're expanding it, and then they're saying, well, it's only Central Park. Well, yeah, part of it is ends at 75, and it's just a little, little block of downtown. But the real technical downtown is from Avenue G uh-huh. to Dallas, or Conroe Street, which is just one street uh-huh. above Dallas, you know? Uh, 45 right. and Avenue 10 Avenue. or 10th Street, oh, 10th Avenue. Wait, yeah, on, yeah. The ship lease. on the east, yeah, the right. east. Okay. That's technically downtown. downtown. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because right here through Dallas Street, they're starting to build that walkway. Mm-hmm. And like I was telling him, they're going to build a walkway from here to Candy Cane Park. Mm-hmm. Um, they should, it's hard to get to. Correct. And then it's going to link up to Rob. Well, I think it already goes to Robinson Park. But I think the goal, from what I've told, just from other people, is uh, so you can get from like Candy Cane to the other part to the. It to needs the to be bike paths or something to move people around. Mobility, uh, personal mobility. Right. That's how you grow a city and make right. people. I mean, it's it's really dangerous now if your kids want to go to Candy Cane Park. Right. You know, they either trek through the bio or go down <laughs> Fraser and cut through. You know, yeah. there's that feeder part too. Feel, mm-hmm. feel bad over there, but. Yeah. yeah, but that's, I, I'm I'm happy with all the new changes that are coming here. That's no, fantastic. I, I've been here seven, and you've been here way longer. Um, and I think you were born here. You calling but, us old? No, no. What? Well, because yeah. when, when I got here, when I got here, it was it wasn't as big yet. And, uh, no, you got here when it was probably one of the worst times ever for the city. You know, financially, it was it was the cheapest to buy stuff at that time. Yeah, because even this right here where the gym's at, that wasn't built yet. Yeah. So that was two thousand three. When I got here, I think 2004. But yeah, it's, it's changed a lot. And, and a lot of times, because I stayed just in this me- immediate area because of the businesses. I mean, like, Conroe's growing, and then now I started going towards 336, well, a few months back. And I'm like, whoa. Like, I, all this is like There is huge, a ton of stuff coming. Huge. A lot huge, of subdivisions huge. coming all over the city. North, south, yeah, east. There's about 100 acres behind my house that were empty. Now it's just houses. Yeah. That's how it is right behind my house, too. They're building a brand. all the way to 3083. Mm-hmm. That whole forest area. And now it's about to be up here when you take a ride on League Line and turn into Wally Wilkerson like you're going to the airport. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of subdivisions coming down Correct. that way, too. Yeah, that's where I'm, I'm over so there. So with growth comes issues, too, of like traffic. and. I can see it's going to be a big problem. Even now where I lived off the of League Line, you know, by Cracker Barrel and all that. Mm-hmm. It'll back up right now. Yes. And they're building an apartment. There's already an apartment right there by the movie theater. Oh, yeah. They're building another one in front of the movie theater. I just saw the sign went up this week. Across the street from them, they're already one that's been built that's probably about 40% built already. 
And then there's another one, a little further down league line off the road, uh, that's apartments. Mm-hmm. All those people are going to be coming. And they all have to come that way. Yeah, well, well they all sure go to all those subdivisions and everything I'm that sure are back there. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's yeah, on the get, exit. 45. You can can't stop it? progress, though. I mean, it's right. just part of uh, you either embrace it and, and, and grow with it, right. or you get engulfed in it. You, you, know, you become right. all Dean. We, we had um, no, don't say that. we had Brandon Polk that yeah, Brandon Polk, Brandon Polk yeah. uh, here on the podcast mm-hmm. and uh, he mentioned something about the old Conroe versus the new Conroe. Mm-hmm. Do you see that as well? Where there's like a there is, issue? Oh, it's always been an issue. I mean, the old Conroe people are people that were born here and they went to Conroe High School and they like power and they want to control things and they don't like new people coming in and changing stuff and bringing all this business here. You know. Right. It's almost like they want their, you know, piece of the pie and to do it. it. So I see that. I mean, that's always been a politically uh, a problem in this city because there's not very many people that vote. That, that's that's only their friends them. vote, and you're going to get the same old retread politicians that come in and right. say one thing, and then as soon as they're elected, do another. Right, I mean, right, right, right. And what, what, do you, what side are you on if you don't mind me asking? Well, uh, I mean, you're a business owner. You I'm a business so owner. I mean, I, I'm you not going to control I'm people. I don't want to be an old Conroe right. person. I mean, right. uh, I'm a new Conroe embraces old and new. You Correct. know, what, what's wrong? What's wrong with embracing the growth that's coming? Nothing. 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 I mean, you have to, right. and it's almost like they wanted to say the same, and, and so they can own the property, or they can, you know, their friend can own it, or they mm-hmm. make sure they get, you know, their, their side of it. broker it. Or whatever. I mean, it's just look. It's not just unique to Conroe. It's in every city across the correct, country. Correct, you you sure. got good and bad politicians, just like you got good and bad people. You mm-hmm. know. Yes, yeah, like I said earlier with Montgomery, when I was looking to put a store over there, um, they're like, "Yeah, you can have it in in the historic side of Montgomery," and they're like, "But here's this three page things of what you can't do to the property. You mm-hmm. can't paint it. You can't put signs. You can't do this. You can't do that." I'm like, "Well, that just kills." I can't yeah. do nothing, yeah. you know? Um, and they're like, well, yeah, take your business elsewhere. And now that's why they build all the other stuff. And I think they fought that Kroger that's in Montgomery for the longest, where they didn't want to allow that Kroger to come yeah. in. And that's shop. probably one of the biggest tax revenues, deposits in their account every day. Correct. <laughs> every, every 20th when they pay those taxes. So after that, so you got all this going on. And it sounds fun. I kind of like, I like, I like living in the mayhem. Kind of like mm-hmm. what you're going through. That's, that's what moves me. And if not, I get bored. Um, that's why Luis always tells me I'm always dipping my hand into different, yeah. different revenues. Yeah, I got to stay busy. Uh, but that's good, man. That's good that you got that going on. Um, honestly, I haven't been there yet, um, but I pass by all the time. What's taking you so long? I mean, I we've only been open nine yesterday. months. Luis was there last yeah. night. He invites last me night. last minute. Um, I think the biggest thing is just, um, I'm just gonna now that's PR there, you have a reason. Yeah, to yeah. So I told PR, yeah, I was gonna go check them out, so I have to go check them out. And then um, bring and your I, family when you're adding your wife because they'll like it. Too. Right, right, right. Yeah, because Thursdays we just missed it yesterday, but Thursdays has always been PR tacos de viria. Oh yeah, for the, like the longest. So do do you have any Hispanic bands? I haven't yet, but it's just because my background, I don't know a bunch mm-hmm. of them. I, I want my wife is Hispanic, and she wants some stuff. As my, yeah. we, had the, we had a Selena <laughs> tribute band for her 50th birthday uh, in October at play. <laughs> yeah. And we had her birthday party there, and it's fun. People love it. Mm-hmm. I just don't have those contacts. Right. And I'm not going to pick up the phone and cold call a booking agent right. for a Latin band because mm-hmm. and then he won't understand what I'm doing, and they're going to want what I can't give them. So I'll save yeah. my breath. <laughs> yeah, whenever you get that contact, for sure. That I mean, he, uh, Conroe's population of Hispanics is oh, huge. huge. Yeah, and um, they're always looking looking for something to do, especially live bands, right? Like whenever we have the fair. Yeah. The fair when we have like the Latino Sun. What is it called? The Sunday. Sunday. Sunday Latino. Those yeah. things are packed. Just go packed. to Hano. Yeah, go to Hano Day. Those things are just packed to the teeth. Correct. You know? Because I think the main thing is just nothing's close by mm-hmm. for them. You know, everything's in for us. Us, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I don't, I, I don't, I don't go to the Hispanic uh, uh, bands because I don't know many of them either. But uh, what I meant is like places to go and dance. They're like all in downtown Houston or the yeah, 1960 uh-huh. area. And what I need to do is clear the picnic tables and yeah. put a good playlist on, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, put a special on Budweiser and call yeah. it a night. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Budweiser. And Modelo. 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 Yep. Yeah, and there you go. That, that might, that, 
Might be onto something. You already have a margarita machine. The margarita machine's yeah. always flowing. People love the Maidley margarita. Maidley margarita. I'm going to have to go try that. Try it out. Anything else for you, Luis? Um, nope, that's it. That's We just wanted to get people to know you, Frank, right? Get people to know who Frank is and who and where the Maidley's at. And, you know, we'll have this episode on Spotify and YouTube. You know, and you can share it on your Facebook. Okay. That way I'd be happy to. Yeah, we'll share it around. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Learned a lot. Thank you, Ray. Learned a little bit more about Historic Corner, which is real, real good. And uh, we definitely got to go out there, you know, and probably go today because I don't think we don't have nothing to do today. Uh, tomorrow we won't, we won't be able to go. But today we'll be out there for sure, All 100%. Right. Thank you so much for coming on here. Appreciate you. I'll see you on social Thanks, media. Yeah. All right, take All care, right, guys. Take it easy. Bye-bye.